Hello guys, welcome to a new game, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I will be playing this DS game, and it's a uh, investigation slash puzzle game, thinking game thing. It's fairly fun, I like it. So, I haven't played it yet. I played it a little, I played like half the thing just to get the basics down. That's about it. So, let's get into the video game. Alright, he said gasp it gasp, and then she murdered her. Damn it, why me? I can't get caught? Not like this. I've gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 1947. Boy, I'm nervous. Aren't we all? Right. Oh, hiya, Chief. I'm glad I made it on time. Oh, I have to save Phoenix. I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your clan as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before the case? Yes. Actually, I kind of uh, owe him my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Oh, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair, oh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> it's Nick. Hey, hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I'm afraid to die. What? What's wrong with you, Larry? Oh, it's all over, Nick. I'm finished. I'm finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. You, you took her away from me, Nick. Who did this? Oh, Nick. You gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? The person's responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspaper says it was you. <laughs> my name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a simple, fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy arrested was the unlucky sack tape man. Very butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. <clears throat> it's kind of funny, actually. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One of the things I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone, he's a good guy at heart. That, I, and I own one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's why, and that's just what I'm doing, to, going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Boss. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm a little nervous. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thank you, Mr. Your Honor. 
Mr. Wright. Given the circumstances, I think we have to just discern your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of just simple questions. Answer them correctly and clearly, consistently. Please state the name of your defendant. That would be Larry Butts. I know it. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what the murder victim's name. Sorry. Whew. I knew this one. Glad I read the case report covering to cover oh, so many times. It's wait. Uh oh. Uh, uh, no. Uh, what, what, no way. I forgot. I'm drawing the total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim's. Uh, of course, I know the victim's name. <laughs> I think I am. Uh, I just forgot S temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Let's hear your answer. Who's the victim of the case? Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what the cause of death. She died because she was... Hit with a blunt object. Struck. Was, she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You see, much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. <laughs> well then, first, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright just told us the victim was strung by a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue, the kegger. The, the thinker, I'm sorry. It was found lying on the floor, next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it to it and to evidence. Statue to the court has record. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Be sure to pay attention to the ev evidence added to the trial. That evidence is only ammunition you have in the court. Touch the court record button to check your court record frequency. Mr. Payne, the prosecution we call its first witness. Prosecution. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your case, your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. So, let's just not hope he doesn't do any say, say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, it's, is it not true that your victim has recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumb. She would just was taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What is it to you anyway, Mr. Butts? What you described is generally what you mean, we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had returned overseas with one of the, them the other day before the murder. What do you mean, buddy? Or what do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Donna, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have returned to the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? 
Yes. Older men who gave her money and gifts. <laughs> she took their money and used it to support their life, her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly want to see what kind of woman Mr. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts. What do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry is one of the running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Let's watch him do nothing. That's joking. My client has no idea that the victim was seeing other men. The question is irrelevant to the case. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That, that cheating, she's a dog. I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, then when I meet, meet her in the afterlife, I'm just going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy. This is not looking good. Next question. Did you enter the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went there. He went. What do I do? Have him answer and sister. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts, dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simply testifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found a victim body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing from the scene of a crime. He's going to die. Just joking, we're going to save him. Mr. Payne, our prosecution may call to another witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Saw it. You sell newspapers, scriptures, is it correct? Oh yes, yes. Newspapers, yes. So saw it. You may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door and selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing from the apartment. I thought he must have been in a hurry because he left the door halfway open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead. I quailed in front and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the th phone wasn't in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a pl public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone and the work victims working anyways? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't the phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone was Mr. Sawit used one of those. Your phone. I have a record of your blackout for your purse. y'all. Blackout record. I have to the court record. No, Mr. Wright. Yes. Er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Alright, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? 
why you're supposed to like, expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness has to have been lying in this testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the hand at evidence. There's a bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you found the contradiction evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button to point the contradictions in the witness's face. Cross-examination. Alright, let's first look at the w our, uh, evidence real quick. Let's see, death of, time of death. Ah, uh, 4 or 5 p.m. Cause of death. I already know this one now. Yeah, yeah, looking at it lying around. No, I'm moving dead. I thought to call the place immediately, however the phone and apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park station, filed a the phone, I remember the time exactly, it was 1 p.m. Oh yeah? Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m., for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts this autopsy report. Autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to her, <clears throat> no body to be found at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, or, uh. This is tri trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After her testimony, I find it hard to believe. Mr. Solwit, why do you. Why were you so certain you found a body at 1 p.m.? I. Uh, well, I. That's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him in the spot. That's all you have to do. Put out, Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. <coughs> Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give the testimony again? <sighs> you see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Yeah, I already see this one. I guess the victim must have been watching a video of tape program. That's how I knew it. I was going to be on. about the misunderstanding. I don't. I, I'm just saying this. I never heard a show that says the time, but whatever. Hmm, I see you heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Even a tape program, still. So I don't care. Mr. Wright, you made a cross examination. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. This is Pshaw. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. It was a voice saying the time was probably coming from the television. Oh, yeah? How about the blackout? Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution, he said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah. I, I, well, er, er. the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, wait, wait. I remember now, Mr. Sawit. The court would prefer to hear the accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It uh, must have been a shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. 
I got this. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock on the apartment. Wasn't that wasn't there? Yeah, that, the murder weapon. The killer used it. No, it's a statue. You liar. That's must have saw it. Something he said. He saw a clock. I guess I'll explain it. Gladly. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was t a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. You just killed the victim. Statue. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. It was a statue. How is it supposed to be a clock? Ah, you, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Solwit. Hey, I, I, I saw that there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Uh, yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just need to tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted. It's a. It is a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that your witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony? Yes. <laughs> There's a gaping hole in your witness testimony. So that way we can have known this weapon was a clock. There's a hole in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment of the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove it I went in there! I'll do better than that. I can prove you're the one that killed her. You struck her with the clock, and, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That's the sound you heard. Order in the court! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Solwit, the sound must have left to you quite an impression on you. Understandable. Since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim, the voice was burned into your mind. That's why you're so certain about the time. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjure conjecture or whatever. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> would the would, would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with a clock? I I, I that, that that day I, I I never looked at the clock. I heard no. I mean, I saw. <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I hate you. I it was you. It was him. I tell you, I saw him. He, he killed her, and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, you claim the same. The sound came from the witness heard from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think of through clear play. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Solari game was definitely this clock. In fact, which is clear if you simply... Let's try sounding the clock. That sounds right. Let's sound the clock now in here in the court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, 
We've heard of the clock, and what are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, the clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the description between Mr. Sawit heard actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Yeah, he's, he's not looking too good. Ha ha ha! You forgot one thing. Uh oh. What's he th talking about? Oh, it may seem like a clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, then why, you have, why don't you have a case? He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright? Seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indicate the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Frank. It's all right. I've come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers all slime. Grr, I almost had him. I'm sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Saw it. Mia? I, I mean, Chief? Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But Chief, it's sober! Can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why is the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I think, yes, I think I got this. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you said the clock is already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There was a piece of evidence on the court record that can prove the, my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that provides. Oh, she came from France, right? And there's a time gap, so... The victim had just returned from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. It's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day in there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard was struck in the dead and the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Just... <laughs> oh, he had a seizure, I think. I don't know. Order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client, he or she was arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is the only formality, but the course finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Da -da 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 <clears throat> and with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check out see what people were out in their houses that day. So basically, he breaks in people's houses and steals their stuff, I'm guessing. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim was at home. After he left, Mr. Sawat let himself 
in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victims returned. Bless her, Mr. Sawick grabbed the nearest blunt object and that he could find. And, yeah. I can't. I still can't believe we won. Right? Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen the trial and end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen a joking look so happy. If she's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait. No. What? I mean bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're not. You're innocent. The case is closed. But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man, forever. Larry. She was a... Fucker. <laughs> 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 never. No, nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see your headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. Hey, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner. Movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was... Hey, I was the one that got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Wow, that's... Thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can I believe it? Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... She just was paying me for a fool. Doesn't that make... Don't that make you cry, want to just cry? Sob. Mary. Are you sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite of you a lot in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, okay? Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something you show to your friends? Something to prove she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah. Right. What the heck is she talking about? Take that. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, that's probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to trick traveling. We'll make it of it what you will. Hey Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We really never know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we know is to believe in them. In order to believe in them is to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. See, how are you about dinner on me? <laughs> we'll drink a uh, toast to incent a bus. Yay! Speaking of Harry, you were saying part of you becoming Laura was because of him. Or, yeah, or at least. You have to tell me more about this sometimes. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. 
But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me unless you count the clock he gave me. Uh. I didn't know it then. Because that clock was soon going to be the center of another innocent. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be that promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Oh, well, guys, I know it was kind of a long episode, but eh, I didn't feel like breaking it down into pieces because I didn't see him. It was right. A brand new episode is better. All right, so turn to my scissors. All right, so all right, I guess that's it for this episode. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again. Bye.